feel the same way once you read the book. So that's the end note. I'll come back to that a little bit later because there's a little more to the author's note there that I would like to share with you. Right now, I'd like to read a passage from the book. And after that, we'll have a book signing. Okay? Good. I'd like to ha actually ask my friend JP to come up here because JP knows French. He knows how to pronounce it well. So this is from chapter 11, entitled Mind, Num Mind Numbing Hard Work. JP, would you read that from Ernest Hemingway? Il faut d'abord durer, which means first what one must endure. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Tell's first apprenticeship cost 20 Deutschmarks monthly, and his mother's reserved money barely covered it. In the second year, he would be paid 20 Deutschmarks a month. In the third year, that would double. Of course, Room and board at the hotel where he worked was complimentary, but largely a formality considering, as Tell put it, quote, one worked 18 hours a day, six days a week, and slept on Mondays, the one day off, end quote. That is, when he got a day off. Quote, when the restaurant was closed, we seldom got the day off because there was gardening to do, planting or harvesting. We were told it builds character said Chef Walter Stave, who later endured the same apprenticeship program as Chef Hill. The German cooking apprenticeship was part of an organized system established in Germany in the 19th century. Three years of on-the-job training sandwiched between formal trade school classes offered nothing more than an opportunity to each participant who had to make the most of his chance. One either worked every day less one day per week to attend trade school classes, or worked each day for three months and attended classes for a month. After a completion of the three-year mandatory program, student apprentices passed or failed a battery of written, oral, and practical exams for certification. One moment. Desiree, hello. Hi. Can we get a chair possibly for Desiree? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Most chefs of noted fame, before and during Tell's time, began their careers the same way. Upon completion of the three-year program, the German certificate declared one a graduate cook, not a chef. To the adolescent boy, the commercial kitchen he worked in was a confusing, jumbled, dangerous place. Slightly more than a decade earlier, hundreds of steel bombs cascaded nightly like rain upon Stuttgart, and now a rain of stainless steel in the chef's milieu scared him. Ladles, tongs, forks, spoons, and knives commingled with hefty mashers, mixing bowls, flexible whisks, and spatulas, each encrusted with leftover orts and scrapings, thrust at him. He, the lonely dishwasher, the chef de plonge, labored furiously to reduce, to restore them to pristine condition. Saucers, saute, and roasting pans of aluminum, steel, pewter, and cast iron, broiling sheets, and baking sheets, double broilers, one ounce glasses to multi-gallon jar jars and pots, begged to be scrubbed as fast as kitchen chefs required them throughout the two nine-hour daily shifts he endured six days a week. In scattered three seconds of relief, Tell glanced across the room and glimpsed the torrid action of chefs managing matches, burners, open flames, and coal stoves. He took in the sights, sounds, smells, and activity of heating and cooking myriad combinations of foods day after day, night after night, to exacting German standards of culinary excellence and hygiene. Ultra-sharp blades filleted, pared, sliced, diced, chopped, minced, and cut vegetables meats, herbs, breads, fish, and, at times, fingers. <laughs> they flashed and menaced under hot, soapy suds that rose in the sinks where he toiled month, month after month, perspiration dripping from his forehead on tired legs, aching to sit down. Little by little, frightening conglomerations of blenders, slicers, 
Termix juicers, stand mixers, bullion, stock, broth, spice, and yeast containers, frozen cold, chilled, lukewarm, hot to boiling hot, hot liquids, and solids, at last came into focus, alongside vinegars, cooking wines, cooking oils, and sherries, baked, fried, sautéed, boiled, broiled, simmered, braised, and slow-cooked vegetables, fruit, game, fowl, seafood, shellfish, and animal meats gradually made sense to tell. Allowed small breaks, he watched confectionery sugars, sweeteners, flowers, eggs, and extracts transform into plated de dessert delicacies under the hands of pastry chefs. Under the scrutinizing eyes of the chef de cuisine, which either approved them dismissively or disapproved them angrily, these plated creations passed or failed. The approved disappeared to the front room where patrons admired, savored, and devoured them after, with after-dinner liqueurs and coffees. The hard-working stripling rose within a year to the unheralded status of commis, 